Greetings, fellow Star Wars fans, and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Lore. And in this one, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking a bit about the carbon freezing equipment used. Carbon freezing chambers were designed to preserve to be in a gas and its spin sealed variant for shipping across the galaxy. They were never intended for the freezing of sentient beings, at least not at first. Now, a millennia before the Battle of Yavin, the Kraft had conquered the Empress Teta star system and encased the system's ruling class in carbonite after taking power. After that, the freezing of living beings in carbonite blocks was considered a form of punishment or even torture among the galaxy's civilized star systems. Carbonite contained unique properties that tended to give it the ability to suspend organic matter in a form of stasis. With skillful control of a carbon freezing chamber, a living being could be frozen in a carbonite block and placed in hibernation for as long as the carbon freezing chamber operator wished. The process, however, was inherently dangerous and even the slightest miscalculation could result in the death of the subject. Now, during the Galactic Civil War, Darth Vader lured Luke Skywalker to Bespin in order to capture him and bring him before his master, Emperor Palpatine. You know, it, like you're watching right now, it's in Star Wars Episode 5, um, Empire Strikes Back. But before Skywalker's arrival, Vader wanted to ensure his quarry would survive the freezing process, so he decided to test it on Han Solo. The Karelian was encased in a carbonite, carbonite block while his friends looked on. Now, Bespin's Cloud City was equipped with a number of heavy industrial carbon freezing chambers designed by Fig and Associates, which maintained significant mining interests in the floating Cloud City itself. After being harvested from Bespin's lower atmosphere via Cloud City's enormous tractor beam, Tabina gas was pumped through sophisticated refineries and stabilized at high pressure through press cam tubes. From these tubes, the Tabina gas was pumped into the storage tanks in the roof of the carbon freezer chamber before being released into the chamber pit where it was suspended by miniature magnetic fields. A control casing designed to frame the liquid carbonite that would cascade into the pit in a shower of fluid and sparks was then slid into place. The liquid, which also came from storage tanks above the freezing pit, would wrap itself around the molecules of Tabina gas, locking them into place for transport out of the city. Liquid cooling vents were then used to flash freeze the carbonite to form an airtight solid tomb, known as a carbonite block. A hydraulic lift was used to raise the carbonite block formed by the complicated process. Blocks typically weighed more than 100 kilograms. Specially designed retrieval tongs were used to put the block on a special repulsor sled for transport to processing and shipping stations throughout the bowels of Cloud City. Carbonite blocks containing spin sealed tabina gas were not immediately transported off Cloud City, but were shipped to panning stations where a high energy microporous field removed the tabina gas atoms. These atoms will then be processed and packaged in special canisters ready for shipping. Now, the block that kept Han Solo in suspended animation for six long months looked like a twisted statue of its occupant. It featured a life system monitor which had on Bespin allowed Landau Calrissian to check whether his old friend was alive. Calrissian had expressed concerns to Darth Vader that the process would kill Solo, but the carbonite block's monitor confirmed that the prisoner had survived. Also attached to the flash blasted block was a carbonite flux monitor allowing observers to gauge the level of the carbonite matrix. A gas ratio monitor was also fitted to the block as well as a carbonite integrity monitor. Han Solo survived the cruel and painful process of carbon freezing and was handed over to the bounty hunter Boba Fett who proceeded to take him to the palace of Jabba the Hutt. And it was there that Solo adorned a wall of the crime lord's palace. Now, no amount of equipment could make emerging from being frozen in carbonite a pleasant experience, though. Han's awakening was made worse by the fact that he awoke to find himself in Jabba the Hutt's Tatooine Palace. Leia managed to release Solo from his state of suspended animation by sliding the block's decarbonization lever into place. Now, the casing emitted a high-pitched sound as the process began, melting the carbonite away from Solo's face and giving him back his freedom. It soon became clear, however, that Han had fallen victim to hibernation sickness, an illness that quite often experienced by those who had recently been released from carbonite blocks. Symptoms included disorientation, temporary blindness, and hypersensitivity to sensory input. 
Vivid dreams and hallucinations were also a symptom of the sickness and, on occasion, were known to, co known to co cause insanity in weaker-minded victims. And as a side note, carbon freezing chambers were pretty much hot, uncomfortable and dangerous places to work. But for the poor kind, poor seen humanoid species of Ugnaughts who were well used to their, the inho inhospitable conditions on their home planet of Gentes, they provided the perfect working environment. Ugnaughts lived in highly primitive colonies on the surface of Gentes where opportunities were severely limited. And it was due to that that a large number of Ugnaughts eventually left the planet to work within the bowels of Cloud City or on Lothal. And there you have it, now you know more about a lot of the carbon freezing, the carbon freezing equipment they used in the movies and in the TV series. So if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like, uh, subscribe if you're new, and don't forget to drop a comment or two and all that, and I'll talk to you all on the next one guys, I'll catch you later.